Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about writing a procedure in science class. This is a skill that you learn in science and it is a very important skill. We're going to talk about why it's important. We will also talk about key things to include in your procedure, how to format your procedure, the type of writing style to use, and then we'll follow up with some examples. And we'll look at some bad examples and make some edits on them to improve them. So why procedure writing is an important skill? Well, first of all, is it teaches your brain to be more logical. It teaches you how to think sequentially in a logical format so that other people can more easily follow your train of thought. Also, writing clear directions is just an important skill in many, many, many different jobs and in your home life. Here are some examples. So giving someone directions to how to get to your house, uh, telling someone how to cook something, or making how-to videos on YouTube or how to do anything, you need to either verbally or with writing have a clear set of steps for someone to follow. Okay, if you're a supervisor someday or a parent, you could, will also be able to benefit from this skill. Also, how many of you have had a toy with horrible directions that no one was ever able to figure out how to build that toy? Or how many of you have had a piece of furniture that needed to be assembled and the instructions were terrible? Now, chances are you don't recommend anyone else to buy that toy or that furniture because you had such a terrible experience. Well, some companies hire people who are technical writers. And obviously it would be good for that company's business if they hired somebody who specialized in writing really clear instructions or procedures on how to assemble their toy, their furniture, whatever. And so that's a whole career path opportunity. So key things to include in a procedure, detail, lots of detail. Be very specific and tell someone exactly what you did so that it can be repeated. You can assume that the reader has your list of materials but do not assume that they have any other background knowledge. You want to write it so that anybody could follow your procedure and do the exact same experiment that you, that you did. All right, make sure you number your steps, that you sequence your steps, very similar to how a recipe is. And we do this because it is much easier to follow. If you've ever tried to follow a recipe that's written in a paragraph form, you find you have to keep rereading to figure out which step you were on. And it can be very, very annoying. So with the numbered steps, with the numbers written right underneath each other like they are here, it becomes much easier to like, yes, I already did that step. Now I'm on this step. You don't have to reread everything. Write in small sentences. If it becomes too large, maybe you, that's a hint that you need to split it into two steps. You write it as a command statement. Fill the beaker with five milliliters of water. Don't say first fill the beaker with five milliliters of water. Don't say I filled the beaker with five milliliters of water. You want to make it as a command. Do this <laughs> is the style of writing. I know it sounds rude, but it's the way that we write science procedures. Okay. Avoid using I, we, and you. And because your steps are numbered, you don't have these little transition words at the start of a sentence. It's just too much writing. We want it to be as succinct as possible. So let's look at an example procedure today. What affects the size of a crater left in sand? All right, so first thing when I look at this procedure, the first thing I notice is we. We don't use we in scientific writing. So that's for sure something we're gonna want to change is get rid of those, okay? 
The other thing that I noticed right away is that it's written in past tense and we want to write it more like a command. Okay, so initially they started with we, that's no good. They had it in past tense, that's also no good. We want to make it like a command statement. So, and they also didn't tell where they put the sand. So put sand into a bucket and smooth the sand so that it is equally spread out and covered with a thin layer of orange powder. So I spelled orange wrong, of orange powder. Okay, so do you see how this format is similar to what the student had originally written, but it's more clear, we're saying where we put the sand and we're putting it in the right kind of grammar for a science procedure. All right, step two, we measured the mass of all the spheres. Okay, so we could certainly just change it to measure the mass of all the spheres. If you notice down here, they never recorded it. And that's something that's that's lacking in this experiment. This data table does not have that data. So I think in step two, we should probably also tell them to not only find the mass, but record it. So find and record the mass for each of the spheres is a better way of saying step number two. Hmm, when I look at step three, they never mention how high they're dropping it from. So that would be an important piece of information to include. I'm being specific. It's not just one meter high because am I measuring from the floor or from where the sand is in the bucket? So we want, by saying one meter above the sand, it prevents kids from being like, oh, where am I actually measuring from? Drop the spears from one meter above the sand and measure the size, the diameter, the circumference, the depth. Uh, size is too vague. What are we going to actually measure? In this case, I think I'm going to choose diameter because I think that would be pretty easy to measure with a, with a meter stick or with a ruler. So right here, we could make this into two separate steps. And then we, of course, want them to record. So measure and record. So our newly edited procedure has many improvements to the previous version. One, we took out the word we. We made things as commands. We made things more specific. Where are we actually putting the sand? How high are we actually dropping the balls from? And we um, made sure that people were going to be recording the data. So teachers, stay on for a moment. I've got a comment for you. Students, bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up or subscribe for uh, more videos like this. Teachers, uh, there is a link in the description of this video that will um, allow you to get on this assignment that I'm on right now. And I have other procedures that they can analyze and adjust written on here. And I have a spot for them to also uh, make their own procedure. So feel free to download this assignment right off of the video description. Please consider subscribing. I do a lot of sharing of resources for other teachers. I have a whole channel where I'm trying to um, post videos to help other teachers navigate through teaching science in this very difficult situation. So uh, please consider subscribing and um, I hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.